Pop OS. You know, it's awesome. And no, I don't mean pop as in what the rest of the world calls soda, because here in Michigan, we have to come up with strange names for everything. No, I'm not talking about a delicious beverage. I'm talking about the Linux distribution from System76, the same company that makes laptops and desktops that are born to run Linux. They make their own distribution, Pop! OS. I've been running it for some time. I've basically been using it on and off since it came out. And honestly, I use Pop! OS more often than any other distribution because it just does everything that I need a Linux distribution to do. It's always been a great experience. I always find myself going back to it, even when I test out other distributions on my hardware. And what can I say that I haven't said in previous videos? I love this distro. And I was very excited when 1910 came out because, again, it's an opportunity to try out a new release of this distribution. And I've already gone and upgraded it. I have my ThinkPad X1 Extreme right here. This is not the newest one. It's the previous model. I did a review on this laptop, but since then a new model has come out. But this machine I don't normally install or test things on because I use this for productivity purposes, but it was already running Pop! OS 1904, so it made sense to upgrade it. And then I did a video, I captured that upgrade in a different video, which is already on my channel. Go ahead and check that out if you'd like to know what the process of upgrading from one Pop! OS release to another looks like. And we're gonna check it out on this machine right here. And I'm excited to review it, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So here on my laptop, I am recording the screen directly off the HDMI port here. And what you are seeing is the initial setup screen that you'll see when you first install this distribution. So what I did in my case, since this is a laptop that I've been using for some time, I created a new user just for the sake of showing you what an unchanged Pop! OS 1910 installation looks like. Now, of course, we're going to have applications here that are not installed by default. That's just because I've been using this for some time, like I've mentioned. So you're not going to have Extreme Tux Racer, Battle for Westnoth, or any of those types of things. Not even Frozen Bubble, although let's face it, Frozen Bubble should be on everything. But you're going to see some applications that are not standard. But aside from that, since I am logged in as a normal user, a brand new user, you're going to see a pretty fresh experience here. So, so at this welcome screen, I'm just gonna go ahead and click next. And let's see if anything has changed here. So I'm going to select the default typing experience English right here, that's my default. Location services are currently enabled. So if you're using any application that uses your geographic location, this will allow that application to do so. So it's up to you. I'm just going to leave that default. And as always, we get an option for logging into our online accounts. If we have a Google account or what any of these others here, we can log into those. But I'm going to go ahead and skip this. So if you're installing this fresh, you're probably going to see a screen here that's asking you to create your user account. Of course, I just created this user account, so that screen isn't going to show up. But I'll click Start Using Pop! OS, and let's check out this release. So when you first install 1910, if you may not notice very many glaring changes that's in your face. There's a lot of behind the scenes changes here, but so far nothing that's going to be grabbing your attention. The theme, for example, was completely re-architected, but even then you're not going to notice much of a difference because it was more of a behind the scenes change, which I'll explain in a moment. So if I open up files, for example, you might notice some subtle differences here, but for the most part, you know, the theme is pretty much the same as before because like I mentioned, the changes were in the background. So you wouldn't be able to tell just by looking at the screen, but they did completely re-architect the theme. And why you're not seeing any changes is because, again, everything is behind the scenes, but the reason being is that GNOME is not the best desktop when it comes to themes. Yes, you can install themes. There's no shortage of themes available. You can go to gnomelook.org, for example, and download new themes if you don't like the theme that Pop! OS ships with. But what you wouldn't know, unless you've developed a theme yourself, is that with GNOME, 
It's, I don't think anyone would disagree that it's harder to develop a theme for GNOME than any other desktop environment. And GNOME understands this, and they are taking measures right now to fix this problem. And the way that they're doing this is they take the Adwaita theme, if I'm even pronouncing that right, and they are actually transforming that into a theme engine that developers will then be able to use in a future version to better create themes and make themes easier to create. So basically we're not there yet, but the groundwork has been laid and System76 re-architected the theme to align to that Adwaita theme, which is going to make it much easier for them to maintain their custom theme going forward. But the work that GNOME is doing for this is not specific to Pop! OS. Pop! OS is just one of the first to jump on board and you know take advantage of this, but it's basically going to make GNOME future-proof. And all those people out there that are developing themes, love you guys, uh, you're gonna have an easier time in a future version of GNOME. And it was important for Pop! OS to change that architecture of how they develop their theme now so they don't have to do that work later. So again, you're not going to notice very many changes here, but you know what? The theme looks nice, and I don't really think they needed to change anything because I do feel that Pop! OS has probably the best-looking GNOME desktop available today. Their custom theme is awesome. And it even goes here to the shell. I mean, they customize the shell theme. For those that don't know, I mean, there's several different types of themes in GNOME. There's the icon theme, which you see here, which you change independent of the GTK theme, which handles the buttons and color gradients in windows such as this one. And then you have the shell theme, which is this, where you get the activities overview and things like that. They've done work to basically make sure that everything is consistent and that they did actually theme pretty much everything here. I wasn't able to capture it, but for example, when I am entering the encryption password to boot my machine, even that has seen some theme work and everything is consistent and basically presented in a professional manner. Now, one thing that they did re-architect a bit is if I go to settings, and generally speaking, the settings app will default to the last thing that you were viewing, which for me was this right here. And again, I'm in GNOME settings and I'm under appearance here. And we can see that there's some options for backgrounds. So here's some of the wallpapers that they ship with. And it's pretty easy to change. You just click on one and you can set it to be both the background and the lock screen or just the background, just the lock screen. So I'll set the background. For example, you can see that that has changed. Actually, I kind of like that wallpaper. Maybe I'll keep it around. But this isn't really specific to Pop! OS. This is a new feature in GNOME, which I'll get to in a minute. But if you go here to Appearance, we have an easy selection for light and dark themes right here. So we could easily change over to the re-engineered dark theme, which I think looks a lot better than it did in the past. It's easier on the eyes, which is actually mentioned as a feature. So if you're a fan of dark mode themes, you can easily change that by going to Settings, Appearance, and then Appearance again right here, and then choose between light and dark theme. So this is new for Pop! OS 1910. Now, it's important to understand that if you've installed a third-party theme, you may or may not actually get this option, and you probably won't because this section of GNOME settings that they put in there is assuming that you're using their default theme. So I don't really know for sure yet if it's going to align with customized themes because there's really not a lot of cons consistency when it comes to GNOME themes. But just keep that in mind. If you don't see this option, that could be a reason why. So in my case, I'm going to just switch this back. And one thing I'm going to do here, actually, is show you guys details. And just to show you Pop! OS 1910, that's what it looks like. They put their logo here for the distribution. You can see a little bit about what kind of machine I'm working with here, which is definitely no slouch. I have an SSD. 32 gigs of RAM, an i7 processor, pretty decent GPU, you get the idea. But we also see that we are running GNOME 3.34.1, which I believe is pretty close to the latest. If it's not the latest, there might be like one point release newer here, but you are getting the latest GNOME release, which Ubuntu itself also gets, more on that in a moment. But it's important to understand this because you're going to see some speed improvements in 1910 over the previous release. So when it comes to speed improvements in GNOME, you know, results may vary. Maybe you'll notice it, maybe you won't. I have a really decent machine here, so it was already running GNOME very well. 
So I don't really think I'm going to notice much of a change. I do kind of think that it does seem more responsive, but it could just be the placebo effect because I'm, I'm expecting there to be a change. I've never had a problem to begin with. So maybe if you have a slower machine, you might notice a speed boost. Let me know in the comments if you do notice a speed boost. I'd be curious to see if you guys do notice that. But in my experience, I'm not really noticing a huge change here. But it is great that the GNOME developers are trying their best to make their desktop faster and more efficient. It seems like that's been something mentioned in new GNOME releases as a feature for at least three versions in a row. So I'm glad that they're putting the work. And this isn't really specific to Pop! OS. If you're running any distribution with GNOME 3.34, you're going to get the same speed improvements. Although Ubuntu does sometimes customize GNOME a bit more than the others, so there might be some additional benefit. So overall, I am happy to see that the latest GNOME release is available here. And that's to be expected because every time Pop! OS updates, you get a new version of GNOME and any feature that GNOME ships with in each new release, you definitely benefit from on account of having the latest GNOME. And before I talk about the new features in GNOME 3.34, another thing I'll mention is that on this same screen, again, I went to Settings, then I went down here to Details. If there's a new release of the distribution, you'll get a button down here, which I showed off in another video where I show the upgrade process. That'll let you know that an upgrade is available. It will download it in the background. And then when you reboot, if you want the new version, it will go ahead and install that for you. Even though they are downloading the new release in the background, they're not going to pull a Windows 10 and then all of a sudden, surprise, you're on the latest version. The control of whether or not to run the latest version is completely on you. But, you know, they'll download it in the background and make sure that it's available. In my case, I had to manually click on download. From the documentation, I understood that they would be um, you know, having it download it for you, but you know, maybe they're not actually doing that. Either way, you'll have a button down here that will show a download or an upgrade being available when a new version comes out, and then you can simply upgrade to that. Now, in terms of GNOME 3.34, you know, one thing I'll say about GNOME, like I said, they are focused at this point on background improvements, things that aren't user facing, making it faster, updating the theme engine. But there are some user-facing changes that you're going to notice. And I've already showed one where you go to Appearance, and then under Background, you get you know, a better selection here. Uh, it's more user-friendly to set your background or lock screen. But this, in and of itself, isn't going to make you want to run GNOME 3.34. There's just a lot of these smaller changes here that you may or may not notice, but it does lend to a better experience overall. But one thing that's really cool, I'll go ahead and open activities, then the applications menu right here. And what you can do is you can actually create little folders by dragging icons on top of each other. So for example, I can drag Extreme Tux Racer right here on top of Frozen Bubble. And it basically created a menu. It knows to call it games. It's reading the desktop file information, I believe. And you could basically create your own little folders here on your applications menu, which is pretty cool. So if you use this, which I don't actually use the applications menu myself, I use uLauncher for that. But you get the idea. You can organize your applications and kind of put them all in a category. So now I have created a group for internet, or in my case, browsers, but it actually put it down here in internet. Which, you know, that one thing isn't very user-friendly because it doesn't tell you which one of these four screens it added it to, but it is right here. But you get the idea. You could simply drag and drop your icons to basically categorize the application's menu in a way that makes sense for you and helps you better find your application. I would prefer if you could also do that in the little bar here on the left, but I'm not going to be picky. I'm happy to see that this feature is present in GNOME. And again, this is not specific to Pop! OS, but by upgrading to Pop! OS 19.10, you get all the new features that anyone else using the latest version of GNOME would also get, and this is definitely a welcome feature to have for sure. And again, as far as GNOME 3.34 features are concerned, 
You know, there's there's not a lot that are going to be, you know, in your face, so to speak. But these are the release notes right here. So if you're curious, I'll have a link in the description below if you'd like to check this out. I already mentioned icon folders. That's a pretty big improvement, I think. It mentions a better browsing experience in the web browser. Actually, it's called web. It's GNOME's browser. It's actually known by a lot of us as Epiphany, but it's just simplified to web. This is a browser that, you know, to be completely honest, I don't think anyone should use because it may or may not be updated by your distribution maintainers because it's part of GNOME. And if there's security updates, you may not get it, but it is pretty neat that, it, that they did improve on it. So if you do use this browser, um, they're saying that you are going to have better sandboxed web processes and there's tab pinning that's been added here. Uh, overall, you know, just nothing that's going to grab your attention, but if you're using it, you'll notice it. If you are a user of boxes, which is their front end, GNOME's front end to running virtual machines, you'll know that there's some improvements here. For example, I mentioned separate dialogues are used when adding a remote connection or external broker. Would you notice this if I didn't mention it? Maybe you would, maybe not, but it's a smaller change. If you use, you know, for example, games, if, if maybe you didn't already know that. A lot of people I don't think know this, but games is a GNOME app you can install that basically tries to be a front end to games that you have installed on your machine, similar to Lutris. They have better support for save states, for example. You could have multiple save states per game, which, you know, I don't use this application much. Maybe I'll check it out and do a video if you guys want to see that. But, you know, if you use that, that's a small change. And then I already mentioned the background previews. But there's other updates. I'm not going to go ahead and read the entire thing. You get the idea. There's nothing that's going to make news headlines, but it's overall a better experience. GNOME is really vested in the plumbing, so to speak, to make sure that GNOME is a better experience and it's architected well. So most of their changes nowadays are behind the scenes, which will make it faster and more efficient. So when it comes to Pop! OS 1910, you know, yet again, it seems like it's a very solid, stable, great release. Pop! OS takes Ubuntu and basically improves on it and gives you a better overall GNOME experience. The difference, in case you're wondering, and I'm going to do another video on this in the future to give you all the details, is that, you know, Ubuntu, you know, they do a good job. I have to say, standard Ubuntu, I've reviewed it already, 1910, it's on my channel. Um, you know, it's a good distro. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a good GNOME experience, but... System76 just takes it a step further and makes it even better. They simplify the keyboard shortcuts. They, you know, give you all kinds of things that are built into your release to give you a better overall laptop desktop experience because that's what they're vested in, regardless of whether you're running System76 hardware or not. For example, a lot of the things that you would expect to have from a big name manufacturer like Dell or HP, or even, you know, Apple with Mac OS, they, they all do this. They give you a place inside the settings to just simply click on something. I want the new release of the operating system. Click download, and then you click reboot and install. You're done. Just like you would expect when you buy a new computer from a big name manufacturer like the ones I've mentioned, you get that same experience here. And when there's a firmware update for your laptop, even if it's not System76, they will give you a firmware update for your laptop. My ThinkPad T480S has already seen that happen. And Pop! OS didn't have to, I mean, the developers had really no requirement to make that work on a ThinkPad. They don't sell ThinkPads, but they did. And that's just another way they make the experience better for laptops and desktops. And then if something goes wrong, you know, you accidentally delete your operating system or you basically mess it up, they have a built-in way to boot into a recovery partition that you can use to restore your distribution and you can even do so and still maintain your files. All these things are things that you would expect to find in a release or a laptop from a big name manufacturer. You get that same experience here. So they basically take the Linux experience and then they make it more in line with mainstream uh, computers that you would buy at Best Buy or, you know, even from Apple, because again, Apple does the same thing. You can re, you know, boot into a recovery partition and reinstall your operating system there as well. People generally expect these types of things. And System76, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, they're the only distribution that really delivers this kind of experience. So 
when it comes to 1910, you know, it, it's probably understandable to expect some huge new feature announcements. But, you know, to be honest, the feature list in 1910 on the release notes, honestly, is a little dry. There's a few things. I mean, they re reworked the theme. Great. You may or may not have even noticed that if I didn't mention it, because it's, again, it's behind the scenes changes. So, you know, it's a little disappointing in the sense that there's not a lot of new features to really brag about here. But then I kind of wonder, do we really need more features at this point? Or did System 76 succeed in their mission of delivering a professional laptop desktop experience for the end user, I think they have. So then the argument could be, well, what new features do they actually need at this point? And when you look at it through that lens, then maybe it's not reasonable to expect a bunch of new features because when a distribution first starts out, of course, there's going to be a lot of features in a short period of time, but they do a lot of changes in the background that I don't think a lot of people realize that make the experience that much better. In fact, it's to the point where, you know, I'm having a hard time recommending Ubuntu's desktop distribution to people. And I'm talking specifically about the standard GNOME version of Ubuntu because, you know, Pop! OS just delivers that much better of an experience. I mean, when you look at it, they give you a very professional theme. They give you all the applications that you need. And they also have a really awesome custom utility to install your applications and your updates. This is Pop! Shop. And it works really, really well. So, you know, Ubuntu ships their own themed or skinned version of GNOME software. But then System76, they provide this application, Pop Shop, which does the exact same thing, but it does it better. It's faster, it's more efficient, gets the job done. So new users would definitely appreciate having this. So overall, they do provide a really awesome experience on your laptop or desktop. And then let's talk about gaming, because this was something for a long time that was really hard to do in Linux. And I'm not saying it's completely solved now, but there's been in the past few years, you know, huge milestones reached in getting gaming on par in Linux with, uh, you know, Windows and the like. A lot of games are available cross-platform now. And even if not, you know, we have Steam that offers a compatibility layer now that helps a lot of non-native games work. So it's been better than ever in Linux and not specific to Pop! OS to get these types of things going. And I love that. But Pop! OS takes that a step further. They have a history of maintaining their own NVIDIA driver, which is unique to Pop! OS, just to give users a better experience. Now, that doesn't mean you're always going to get a newer version of the NVIDIA driver in every release than what Ubuntu ships, but they make decisions. You know, if they see a NVIDIA driver that's released by NVIDIA that's not present in Ubuntu, then they might offer that up in their repository to make sure that their users get the best gaming experience, which means you may or may not get a better gaming experience in Pop! OS. It's either going to be exactly the same as Ubuntu or better. So if you're a gamer, then I highly recommend you check out Pop! OS, if only for that reason. That could be the tiebreaker that leads you to install Pop! OS versus Ubuntu. So overall, I am very happy with this release. It seems to run very fast for me. Uh, I mean, I could argue it seems a little bit faster than before, but again, it could be the placebo effect because it's always run fast on this machine that I'm running it on right now. I've definitely never run into any problems as I've been testing this out, but it's not even been out a week yet. So it's really hard for me to say that it is or is not completely stable, but so far I haven't run into any problems and all the previous releases of Pop! OS have been completely solid for me. So for that reason, even though I feel like we need more time to really know for sure, I don't really have any hesitation in recommending this to you. You know, I guess one question might be, do you run long-term support, the LTS release or the current one? Normally, I recommend that you stick with LTS because they're more stable and there's nothing you get in a newer distribution that isn't backported to LTS other than GNOME itself. You're not going to get a new GNOME release, but you get a new kernel automatically in LTS. So normally, I recommend that you guys stick to LTS, but in this case, you know, I left that recommendation. And if you're installing a new installation, go with 1910 because... The next LTS release is the next release, so you'll be able to upgrade directly to that. So I don't feel like there's any reason to install LTS on a new installation anymore at this point. At this point, it's probably a good idea to migrate to 1910 for new installs, 
and then you can upgrade directly to the next. If you're currently running Pop! OS 1804, you should probably stay there because there's no features here that are so amazing that you have to make the jump. And going from 1804 to 1910 isn't supported anyway. You'd have to upgrade you know, in multiple steps in between, which means it takes longer to do that than it does for a fresh install. So if you're running 1804, stay on that because when 2004 comes out, the very next release, you'll be able to move directly to that. It's just less work and then you'll be on the new release that way. So if 1804 is working great for you right now, then there's really no reason to um, move on to 1910 just yet. But again, for new installs, there's just no reason to make any new installation based on 1804 because it's uh, getting to the point now where it's too old for new installs and you could even run into driver problems. So you definitely want to check out 1910 if you are going to install fresh. So what do you guys think of Pop! OS 1910 or otherwise? Let me know in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.